Okay, so we are at the uh, Overland Expo Mountain West. I'm here with Greg, and this is the Enios Grenadier. Am I pronouncing that correctly? Grenadier, yeah. A Grenadier, okay. Yeah, and we've, we've all seen these things, and I think this is the first expo you've been at, isn't it? The very first public show that we've been to with the Grenadier. Awesome, okay, cool. So we're checking this thing out, and uh, I will let you explain all the cool stuff that these things have. Yeah. Well, this is the only prototype. It's an early, a really early prototype that okay. came, we pretty much hand built it in, in 2021. We have used this over the last six months really just to go around and, and see all of our reservation holders. Folks that have placed a reservation on the Grenadier since last October. There's been about 6,000 of those folks in the US and Canada, so we've spent as much time as we possibly could just getting around the country. Yeah. How much do you know about the storage? You want me to go back to basics? Um, yeah, if you want to, sure. please do. Yeah, absolutely. So, Ineos. The biggest brand you never heard of. <laughs> Third largest chemical company in the world. Um, yeah, primarily oil, gas, petrochemicals. Yeah. And uh, there's really no reason that anybody would have heard of, about Ineos. But our founder were privately held. Our founder, Sir Jim Ratcliffe, happens to be a, a, just an avid explorer. He's crossed continents on two wheels and four. He's been to both poles. Um, he's a power user of vehicles like this. And he was really frustrated three or four years ago that he couldn't find the vehicle that he wanted to purchase. Right. He wanted something a little bit roomier and spacious than a, a Wrangler or an old Defender or a Forerunner, something like that. And hence the whole idea for the Grenadier was born. What does Ineos know about building a car? At that point, <laughs> pretty much nothing. Huge amounts about manufacturing and innovation and quality in terms of what we do for our other businesses. So therefore we partnered with BMW as our powertrain provider. We also powered with, uh, partnered with Magna Steyr, who've built the G-Wagon since year Oh, dot. wow, okay, cool. And, uh, and they, that's been our engineering partner, along with a host of kind of greatest hits of tier one suppliers. Right. We've brought all of that together. We've performed 1.2 million miles of testing. It's built on purpose, body on frame, three locking differentials, coil sprung suspension, solid beam axles. I know I'm throwing a bunch of data no, it's at awesome. you here. It's okay. awesome. um, maximum articulation, off-road stability. The vehicle is is an off-road capable utilitarian vehicle at heart. That's his primary focus. But it blends with 21st century oh, technology. Oh yeah, it's beautiful. The BMW engine helps us with that. It's a straight six B58 gas turbo engine, um, as you might find throughout the BMW portfolio, but it's been calibrated for us. We lose a little horsepower, but we max out on torque. Yeah, and that's for where a it's at. heavy vehicle used off-road, that's what you need. Okay. Yeah, it's awesome. Um, if you look at the interior, you may catch uh, catch some uh, some footage of the interior. Okay. You'll see it's kind of aviation inspired. Yep. But primarily, it's meant to be quick, easy to use, quick functions, switch gear, not stuff buried three levels in a touchscreen right. system, which is frustrating yeah, sometimes. Yeah, definitely. We also wanted to take as much sophistication, complexity out of the vehicle. Right. That's the stuff that goes wrong first. That's the stuff that frustrates people. Yep. So mechanical, tried and tested, capability and reliability first. And we try to make the vehicle as serviceable as possible for people who are actually out there and do go over landing and do break stuff in the field. Yeah. And this will be, this will be the same vehicle across the world other than the power plants, right? Power plants, at least the gas power plant, will be the same. Okay. Europe and the rest of the world get a diesel. Right. We won't have the diesel here. There's um, a BMW pulled all of their diesel powertrains from the US market, which means that we don't get to do it either. Right. But if somebody bought this in the United States, shipped it over somewhere, they could get parts for it because of that. Worldwide. Yeah, definitely. That's awesome. Um, one of the things we've tried to do is make it as um, kind of enabling for the aftermarket as we yeah. possibly can. You'll see L-Track down the side of the doors. There's a bunch of accessories that fit to that. We've pre-wired the vehicle to the front, to the rear, and to the roof line on both sides. LED lighting, winches, whatever people want to do with that. Rather than folks pulling down roof liners, taking panels off, yeah. it never goes back together the same way it came apart. Right. Or never comes, at, yeah, <laughs> it never goes back together the same way it was. Um, so we just really wanted to make it as plug and play as possible for uh, yeah, folks like this that are here today. Yeah. And for the people that don't want the tracks and stuff down the side, I was just building these the other day online. Don't have to and you don't have to have any of that. You could just have a fancy SUV if that's what you want. Yep. Or you can have a fully burly, like you were saying, a winch on the front, yep. and, uh, which is pretty cool. And then a lot of, the, a lot of my followers are interested in Alucab products. And I know Jeremy from Alucab in South Africa. Yep. He's already looking at possibly chopping the roof off and making these into an expanding <laughs> unit. And of course, that'd be aftermarket. But it's cool to see that uh, aftermarket 
is already checking these things Absolutely. out because they know what it's going to be. And you know, we welcome them. We want the, to engage with these guys, yeah. give them as much access as they need to the Grenadier up front. Um, the more that they can expand choice for the Grenadier customer is just another reason to maybe come and take a look at the vehicle. Yeah. Is there any idea of what the MSRP is going to be yet in the United States? Yes. No. <laughs> no, seriously though. Um, quarter one of next year. Okay. Um, I usually turn the question around and just ask people, yeah, what do you think it's going to cost? I'm not going to do that right now, right. but we've had folks guessing that it's going to be up to six figures and it's not going to be that. Okay. All. We're going to be quite a bit under that. Okay. Awesome, man. Yeah, these things are cool. Yes. Excited well, to see them hit the market. Reception has been great. Yeah. When, when are we expecting these to actually hit the market? First customer deliveries, at least in the US, will deliver elsewhere in the world this year. So oh, October okay. of this year, we'll start customer deliveries. Oh. Uh, UK, Europe, South Africa, uh, Australia, some of the Middle Eastern markets. And then we'll launch here probably late third quarter of 23. Okay. And then what kind of a warranty is coming with these? Five year, front to back. Okay. 10 years on powertrain. 12 years on the frame. Okay, and then how many how many miles is that? 60,000. Wow, okay, good. That's awesome. Thank you. Well, right on. Is there anything else you want to go over while I'm here? Um, I would encourage you just to take a look at the interior. Also take a look at the grab handles on the side of oh, the roof. Oh, it's so cool. It's just the easiest, the most stable and easy, just to, just to access the roof. You can attach a ladder to it if you're up there on a tent. It's about 850 pounds of static load on the roof, which yeah. is tons for a tent for people and gear. Um, and again, this we envision is going to be used mostly off-road, yeah. but we certainly know there's going to be folks that use it hey, all through the week on-road, but then actually go camping, yeah. hunting, shooting, fishing, whatever it is at the weekend. I was telling her earlier, we live near Aspen, I was like, there's going to be a ton of these in Aspen, I yeah. guarantee it, yeah. right away. And the aftermarket support for all the windows and stuff, these are going to have, I guarantee there's going to be flip-up windows on the rear from the aftermarket. Yeah. They're just going to, they're going to attack this we'll thing. We'll actually have that as an option. So oh, yeah? We, we may okay. steal that one from the aftermarket. Cool. Okay, but, cool. But hey, the rest of it, we, we of course have an accessories range, but uh, there are certain things that the aftermarket simply does better than we do. Right. So uh, have at it. Well, no, that's awesome, man. Well, thank you very much for your time, Greg. Pleasure. Thank Appreciate you, it. All right. Nice to meet you. You too. So all of the switches here are on the top, 25 amp switches, 10 amp switches. So you can run like an air compressor off of that. Has a waiting mode, an off-road mode. I don't know what the waiting mode would be for. Front and rear lockers are up here. Has some sort of attraction control. What a cool truck. You can take the seats out and turn this into a pop top for sure. As always, thank you so much for watching. Like and subscribe if you haven't already, and feel free to check out my other adventure, off-road, and overland-related content.